Uh, thank you all for joining me here today to talk about the uh, newest uh, Moleculite device, the Moleculite DX. Um, it is a point of care device for imaging elevated bacteria loads and also does a stickerless digital wound measurement. So before I get into the live demo, I just want to give you a little bit of background on the Moleculite DX, as you can see here. Uh, we with the device, we detect elevated bacterial loads in wounds. So that's bacterial loads of greater than 10 to the 4 CFD per gram, bacterial loads that are going to stall healing or cause more additional problems to the patient. And then we also perform digital wound measurement. Uh, the device itself is designed to help clinicians with real-time wound assessment and documentation. The device itself is handheld, it's portable, there's a touch screen. We don't use any contrast agent and there's no patient contact either. Um, and there is a reimbursement pathway um, for this technology. The DX features a patient-centric data organization. So the device will organize all the images by patient and by wound, um, allowing you to track uh, what's going on with the wound visit to visit, including differences in wound size and differences in uh, fluorescence. Um, which we're going to talk about in a second, will really help you detect these elevated bacterial loads. Uh, quickly about measurement, uh, we use a uh, unique technology to perform stickerless digital wound measurement. Uh, we measure the surface area, the length and width with greater than 95% accuracy. You can see here what a, a measurement image would look like. And because of our organizational system, we are able to track wound area over time. So you can pull up a wound graph like this one and see very quickly, what is your wound doing? Is it getting smaller? Is it getting larger? And this can help inform your decision making. But the really unique part of the Moleculite uh, is the fluorescence imaging capability. Um, so in a darkened room, uh, you'll use the device to shine a safe, violet light onto the wound, and different components will fluoresce different colors. Um, skin components, slough, anything that's collagen rich will fluoresce green, while uh, the vast majority of bacteria um, will fluoresce in the red fluorescence range, uh, indicating that there is bacteria there um, at elevated loads, uh, whereas cyan fluorescence uh, indicates the presence and location of Pseudomonas aeruginosa specifically. So in real time, we can identify that specific bacterial species. And then the point is, is that once you have this information, that you're able to detect it, you can then go forward and begin to remove the bacteria, which is fundamental to the wound care practice. Now the fluorescence imaging images will detect wounds with elevated bacterial loads based on the presence of either red or cyan fluorescence. So the red fluorescence you can see outlined here will indicate the presence and location of these elevated bacterial loads. It won't tell you which bacterial species it is, just that it's there and above our threshold of 10 to the 4 CFP per gram. Whereas cyan fluorescence, which you can see over here, is that bright white color surrounded by a blue-green this indicates the presence and location of Pseudomonas aeruginosa specifically. So you can treat that individual bacterial species at point of care. And then this can have implications in cleaning and debridement. You can see here, this is before cleaning the red fluorescence that are seen around the edges. And if you watch this video in real time, uh, the clinician is coming in with some gauze cleaning away that red fluorescence and you can see it's coming off directly um, as she goes. So in real time, you really have that feedback uh, of how that, that cleansing is progressing. And you can see in the image uh, to the far right um, that after cleansing, she was able to really remove all of those um, areas of red fluorescence, um, decreasing the bacterial load. And as with cleaning, debridement, this also has implications. You can see here, um, there is a lot of red fluorescence in this toe. And so during debridement, she's really going in, removing that thick callus and um, 
discovering a lot of red fluorescence that's really hiding in there underneath. And she can focus on that area of red fluorescence as she goes to remove as much of it as she can. So what you're seeing here now um, in the top of my screen is really the mirrored screen of the device itself. Uh, so this is our screen mirroring capabilities, which allows me to share what I'm seeing on my screen with my computer and with whoever is on a, a virtual call with me. So the device, you can see it has a patient directory, which stores all of my patients and all of their information. Uh, if I, I can add new patients by clicking on the plus button and entering their information. Within each patient, you can have a number of different wounds. You can see here, we've got two different wounds for this patient. I can always add additional ones again by pressing the plus button. But if I go in, I can track to see how the wound has been doing, has it been changing week to week. And by pressing the plus button, I can add new images to um, this patient's file. The device takes three types of images, standard images, which are taken in normal lighting to document the wound. Measurement uh, images uh, uses stickerless measurement uh, technology to measure the surface area length and width of the wound. At the same time, it also captures a standard image. And then fluorescence imaging takes place in the dark using the violet light of the device to uh, produce fluorescence and to help detect uh, wounds with elevated bacterial loads. So I'm gonna start by taking a measurement and a standard image at the same time by clicking on my ruler here. Um, I, let me use my fake foot here. I wanna position the device eight to 20 centimeters away from the wound for measurement. So you can see here, based on my range finder being green and at the right distance, uh, it will turn yellow if I get too far too close. So I'm going to center the wound in the center of my screen, tap to focus and capture. Once I capture it, it'll take me into my measurement workflow. I can always delay and do my measurement later, but for right now, I'm just going to quickly circle the wound with my finger and click the forward arrow at the top. This will find my wound border for me. I can adjust it if needed by making it bigger or smaller. Um, by, by tapping the forward arrow, it's going to take me on to enter a manually measured depth. So if I was to measure this, let's say it's 0.1 centimeters, I'll enter that. And then at the end, I have my measurement image. I've got a surface area in green, my longest length in dark blue, my width in light blue, and then my enter depth. So I'm going to save that, and that's going to save right into that same patient file and add a new point to the wound area graph. Now I'm going to switch to my fluorescence imaging. Unfortunately, um, my room can't be appropriately darkened, so I'm going to use one of our molecular dark drapes. So these are one-time use uh, accessories uh, that provide portable darkness uh, when you're unable to um, turn off the lights or darken the room appropriately. It very simply clips onto the device. And then you're able to flush out the drape and wrap it around the wound. Whether you use the drape or darken the room, you want it to be sufficiently dark so that that blue circle appears around the light bulb. This indicates it is dark enough for fluorescence imaging. So with that, I'm going to tap on my light bulb and the violet lights turn on and now I can uh, view my wound and the fluorescence signatures within it. Um, I have one of our newest features on the device enabled, co-registration. And that's shown with the light bulb with the one and the little camera beside it with the two. Uh, with this feature, I'm able to capture fluorescence and standard images at the same time with one click of the button. So I'm going to, again, get to the right distance. I want to be 8 to 12 centimeters from the wound, as indicated by that green rangefinder at the top. And then click capture. I'm going to hold it steady while it captures both a standard and fluorescence image and now my two images are captured. 
So let's take a look at what that, that shows. I'm going to take off my directory and dispose of it and click on the thumbnail at the bottom to see the images I just took. Because they were taken in co-registration mode, both images appear side by side and they're linked, indicating that they were taken at the same time and should be um, perfectly co-registered. I can zoom in to see what fluorescence is in my wound um, and compare it directly to where that uh, matches the standard image. Um, if I want to just look at my fluorescence image, I can click the one at the bottom and that'll bring up the fluorescence image in full view. Um, once you have that, we have another um, excellent feature of Fluorescence Assist, which is this magnifying glass button here. If I click on that, um, the algorithm is going to help detect areas of red or cyan fluorescence that are in the image. Um, and so this is really meant as a little helper to the clinician um, as they're getting started to help them identify um, these fluorescent signatures that are indicative of elevated levels of bacteria. If I exit out, you can see that these images have now been added uh, to my patient file. Um, and I can use that information to help um, you know, inform many of my treatment decisions. If I go back to my patient and to my patient directory, I can view data from other patients. For example, John Doe, he has four different wounds you can see here. This wound three is a nice example of cyan fluorescence. It has that bright white with the blue-green color around, indicating the presence of pseudomonas. In addition, it has more of that red blush color, which indicates elevated bacterial loads. And again, I can use my fluorescence assist to help me at the beginning to identify where this is located. Um, in wound one, you can see here, this uh, wound has a nice wound graph, which you can click into and see how the wound is decreasing over time. Um, and we also have a video function. So if I pull up um, this patient here, um, this is a diabetic foot ulcer that was imaged pre and post debridement. Um, so if I want to select you know, my pre and post debridement images, I can view them side by side. And I can see that there was some blush, yellow fluorescence to begin with before debridement. And after debridement, while some of this was removed, we also revealed more red fluorescence that was really deeper into the wound. And in this case, we also took a video of the debridement in real time. So I can play it directly on the device and you can see how they're focusing their debridement, really where that red fluorescence is. And you can see that tissue coming right there off onto the curette as they go. So that's it for our live demonstration. Um, happy to take any questions on the device. Um, and thank you for tuning in. Um, so thank you all for, for listening. Um, I do see that there has been some questions that have come into the chat that I'll address. So the first was whether or not the device measures undermining or track tunneling. Um, so at the moment, no, um, it does. Uh, you can enter a manually measured depth, um, but it won't automatically uh, detect undermining um, in its current form. Um, another question is about how the images can be uploaded into an EMR such as EPIC. Um, so for certain EMRs, there is direct integration. So for Epic example, um, we can uh, connect it to your Epic system and you're able to send images directly into the patient file um, through that direct integration. Um, and for a couple of other um, EMRs, this is also possible. Um, if you don't have one of those EMRs, you can also export the images off the device onto a PC um, and then push the images to your EMR um, in kind of a more manual um, manner. But either way, you, you will be able to get them into the patient record. 
Uh, we have another question here about are there any factors that could cause false readings? Um, so this is something that our clinical specialist team really works with the users to make sure they're taking good images and that they're interpreting the images um, correctly. There are a couple of things um, that could uh, impact the quality of the images. The first being light contamination. It's really important that the room is dark, uh, dark enough that that ambient light sensor, the blue circle I showed, um, appears. Um, if it's too bright in the room, uh, this ambient light will cause red kind of artifacts in the image. Um, but of course, if you're properly trained and you're taking a good image, this shouldn't be shouldn't be a problem. You'll be able to to recognize that. Um, other things like white bed sheets will give off super bright fluorescence. So we we train to try and avoid that. But you know, if you see that in the standard image, um, then that should be counted as an artifact in the fluorescent. Um, uh, another question I have here is, does the device require calibration or what sort of maintenance is required? Um, so the device comes to you uh, completely calibrated and tested out. Um, there's no ongoing maintenance um, or ongoing calibration that you have to do. Um, you just really want to uh, make sure you clean it um, using, you know, cavi wipes or sandy cloths um, and to charge it. <laughs> um, simple as that. Um, and then, you know, if the device is very sturdy, but if there, if you do run into any issues, we do have a quite a robust support team um, as well. Um, I also have a question on reimbursement. Is is this device reimbursable? Um, so um, there is a reimbursement pathway uh, available in the United States. Um, so if you go to our booth. There is a button uh, that says reimbursement. You can download some additional information on that. Um, and of course, you can reach out to us. Uh, and we're happy to walk you through that sort of stuff as well. Um, if there are any other questions um, you want to type into the chat, I'll, I'll wait another, another 30 seconds or so, um, and, and then we'll close out the session. All right. Oh, thank you, <laughs> um, Abe Latner. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed the presentation. Um, we do have a booth here, so please uh, stop by. If you have any additional questions, you've got a team there to, to help answer them for you. All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs>